Uh, good evening, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Uh, I'm here this morning to, or this evening, to give you a code review for analytics, Twitter sentiment analysis. And they wrote an article, and you can find the article right here. And in this article, they gave you the code for the sentiment analysis. Now, I copied and pasted the code into a Google Colab uh, file, and it worked. And then what I did was I saved, I downloaded the submission, and I loaded the submission on the analytics Behadia a Twitter analytics submission page. And so I got on the leaderboard, which is good, which is what I wanted to do, get on the leaderboard. And the thing is, is the only thing that they did was they gave us the logistic regression uh, algorithm, but they said that if you wanted to learn other algorithms, then you'd have to take the full course. And um, I'm probably going to end up taking the full course, but I'm a bit trepidatious about it because what they do is they disable the um, copy and paste mechanism. So you have to um, type everything yourself, which I don't like doing. I don't think it's a very efficient use of my time uh, typing all the code in myself because one, because you're typing it in, you're going to make mistakes, especially because I have a Chromebook and not a full keyboard. But I think I'm going to go ahead and take the full course to learn other algorithms to use in Twitter sentiment analysis. So we'll carry on with the code review. And first thing I did was I imported my libraries and um, you can see that. And then I loaded my files. I loaded my train file, my test file, and my sample submission. So you can see where I loaded all my files. So I wanted to see the train file. The train file, you had an ID column, a label column, and the tweet. And uh, zero means it was not racist or sexist, and one means it was racist or sexist. And so that's what this Twitter sentiment analysis is going to do. It's going to detect racist or sexist uh, tweets um, through using a natural language processing. And then what we did was we combined the two files and we um, did that with the append function. So you appended the test function to the train function. So, and then after we appended the test function to the test file to the train file, we actually made a function called remove pattern. So here's the function that we made. <laughs> And what we done is we've done is we've removed the Twitter handles, and here is the um, the code to remove the Twitter handles right here. And the next thing we did was we removed the special characters. So we moved the special characters, and then the next thing we did was we uh, removed some other characters as well. And so what that had the effect of doing was cleaning up the um, tweets. And you can see they made a new column called Tidy Tweet. And it took out all of the special characters except the hashtags because this, the hashtags have special significance. And you can see here the label. Uh, because we combined the, uh, well, you appended the um, test file to the training file. There wasn't a label. So you can see over here where there wasn't a label. It says not a number. So next time what we did is we got some more, um, some more um, code where they tokenized the tweets. And they've got their own special function called Lambda, which is an internal function. 
So there's some more code uh, to further separate the tweets. So you've got the code to further separate the tweets. And then we've got like a for loop to tokenize the tweets. And now what they've got done is they've got something called word cloud and they've taken this word cloud and they've put all the words from the tweets into this word cloud so you can see all of the words from the tweets in the word cloud and then what they've done now is they've taken the normal words from the tweets and put the normal words from the tweets into the word cloud and then what they've done is they've taken the negative words from the tweets and they've put that into the word cloud as well. And they have another function where they're going to take out the hashtag and they have a for loop so that further uh, processes the, the tweets. So the next thing we do is we extract the hashtag from non-racist, sexist tweets. We extract, ha we extract hashtags from racist, sexist tweets, and we unnest the list. So that's further processing. So what we've done here is you have made a chart with non-racist or sexist tweets, and you've got the proportion of words that are found in these non-racist or sexist tweets. And then they made another graph of racist and sexist tweets. So you can see the words in these racist and sexist tweets. So they've got, um, they, they got a feature called feature extraction text. So they were going to do some more work on the text and um, they've got some code there and now this code right here this is your logistic regression and the logistic regression is where it takes all of the wording from the tweets and it assigns it either a one or a zero so a one means it's racist and a zero or it's racist and sexist and a zero means that it's not racist or sexist and here you've got the numbers here so the 31962 is the last tweet from the training file so the train bow goes up to 31962 and the test file is after 31962. So they know exactly how many tweets they had and they put that into the code. And so what they did was they did a, a test train split. So they split the file into two. So the test size is 30%. So they're going to train on 70% of the training file and test on 30% of the training file. And then you have the actual logistic regression function here. And then you fit it. And then after you fit it, you make the prediction and when you make the prediction you get something called a root mean squared which is your error and after you've made the prediction then what you have to do is you have to um, test on the test file and they call the test file the test bow so you can see the test bow is right here and when they test on the test file, then they make their predictions on the test file, and then you have your submission. So here's our submission file here. So it has ID number, and it has a label, and it has 17197 rows. And we do some more work on that, um, where it tidies it up and fits it and predicts upon it. And... Um, but it doesn't have a submission file like this file here. So I used, since this file had a submission file, uh, that's the file that I put in the analytics uh, Twitter sentiment.
problem and submitted it to it and got myself on the leaderboard. And they said that if you want to learn more about this, then you can take their course. And I'd like to take their course, but the thing that I don't like is the fact that they block their copy and paste function. And I don't really think it's an effective use of my time to be typing out all of these formulas. Because the thing is, is when you're typing it, you're going to make mistakes because I'm on a little Chromebook anyway. And I would rather just copy and paste it. And I looked on the internet to see if I could find the code in there somewhere so I wouldn't have to copy and paste it. So I would be able to copy and paste it, but I couldn't find the code. But I think I'm probably going to end up taking their free course um, and typing in the code even though I don't want to. I hope it's not too much code to type. So that's it for this um, code review. Um, if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you want to support the work I do, I've got my email address down below um, if you'd like to make a donation to PayPal, which will be very gratefully received to help defray my many living expenses. Um, and let me know what you think about this video and let me know what you think about this code review. Um, and thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you the next time.